So freedom and autonomy is a success factor in our DevOps journey and potentially in yours too. I'm Dave Rudder. I'm an organizational change manager at Wireless Car, focusing on DevOps and team development. I'm Ronnie Hilmerson. Uh, I'm Scrum Master at Wireless Car and also work together with David in the DevOps journey with the teams. So take it away. So welcome. Okay, so let's start by telling you a bit about who we are at Wireless Car. So we're a software company work in the automotive industry. We help to bridge the gap between automotive and software by providing uh, solutions of connectivity between vehicles and other services, uh, such as emergency call, stolen vehicle tracking, remote heating, and um, smart EV routing. Um, so we serve millions of cars across 100 countries, uh, and our solutions process about um, 700,000 messages per minute. So we're not a huge company. Um, we've got about 750 staff worldwide. Uh, and the vast majority of those, like more than 500, work in our delivery and product development organization. That is, in our DevOps teams delivering value to our customers. To give you an even clearer picture about what we do at Wireless Car, I'm going to give you two examples of our services. Uh, so, so one is call center services. So this includes emergency call and automatic crash notification. So in the event of an accident in your car, the car will automatically notify our services and, and then that will go on to a call center, uh, uh, the, the local call center. They'll contact you, they'll contact the emergency services, and they'll have information about the location of the accident, uh, the number of passengers, and, and even um, you know, the impact, the area of impact on the vehicle. So we can get emergency services on the scene much quicker with vital information to, to, to help you. Second example is smart EV routing, where we provide the routing um, data for apps to help uh, electric vehicle owners to plan their routes, uh, taking into account things like um, um, the model of the vehicle, uh, the weather and road conditions, and it gives them like the, the route, the charging stations, and suggested charging times as well. So this really helps to take the complexity and the anxiety out of route planning for, um, for electric vehicle owners. Yeah, we also want to talk about the customers uh, to give you an understanding of the environment we are working in. Wireless Car works with some of the biggest and most well-known companies in the automotive industry. And the automotive industry is heavily regulated, which means that when we are not making cars, we need to comply with all the regulations and standards. And our Customers, work, they produce physical products, so we need to work within the limitation it imposes. And I guess you're curious to hear about where we started our DevOps journey. And the wireless car DevOps journey started late 2015 after a cl cloud adoption in 2014. And dev and ops were still separated into different departed, departments. And we also had some challenges with long lead time to production, long feedback loops, uh, and the dev and ops competence stayed in persons. Uh, and the way we handled that was to Merge Dev and Ops, uh, which we did in 2016. And in 2017, also our agile journey continued. So we adopted safe framework, uh, but we did it with a wireless car flavor. And uh, in 2021, uh, we started Elite Software Performer and uh, Team Development Crew. 
to be able to support the teams in the DevOps journey and in the team development journey. And in 2022, Elite Software Performers were renamed to DevOps Guiding Crew, which David will talk about later. And we also want to talk about our organization. Um, we are 700 employees, and the most of us, we work in one of the customer programs. We're delivering uh, software to the customers. And we also have a dedicated customer program for the larger solutions. Uh, and we also have an enablers program to deliver tools to the rest of the customer programs. And we are a team-based organization, which means that we want to support our teams uh, and, and cross uh, customer program. And that we do through uh, team development crew and DevOps guiding crew. Uh, and how we want to help and support our programs and our teams is through strengthening the understanding of DevOps, uh, which today are in different levels in different teams and in different programs. Uh, we also want to help the teams and the programs to adopt uh, more DevOps practices and metrics. And when it comes to metrics, we want to help the teams to be able to measure themselves uh, to be able to improve. And we also want to help the teams with tooling and to understanding the value streams and the processes. Freedom and autonomy as a success factor. That is what we are here to listen to, right? So David, can you please tell us how freedom and autonomy became a success factor for us in Weilescar? Absolutely. Thanks, you, Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie. Okay, um, need to set a bit of context around this. So if you remember a few slides ago, we had the Elite Software Performer Initiative, and we renamed that to the DevOps Guiding Crew. So inspired by the State of DevOps reports and the book Accelerate, uh, we created the Elite Software Performer Initiative with the goal of our teams becoming Elite Software Performers, which sounds fantastic, doesn't it? What we found was that uh, across the different programs and teams, which you've, you saw also a couple of slides ago, was that this goal didn't suit all, all of them. Of course, we had a lot of our teams and programs doing, say, new feature development. But then, of course, we had others um, working with solutions in more sort of maintenance mode or others that needed to do a lot of lifting to the cloud to enable such a transformation. So what we did is we stepped back and we embraced, embraced the freedom and autonomy in which we work at Wireless Car. So we changed the name of the initiative, we changed our objective, and more importantly, we changed the way that we engage and work with our teams in progr and programs. Now, how do we do that? We'll get into more, more details now. Um, so if you remember our diagram of the different programs, um, and how we have the team development crew and the DevOps guiding crew working across them. I'm going to talk about these two crew, crews now and what they do. So the team development crew, uh, it's set up specifically with the goal of creating the conditions for high-performing teams. That's their focus. And the way we do that is by supporting our scrum masters and their teams, and that lets us work across the organization horizontally. So one of the models, the main model we use, is Susan Whelan's uh, integrated model of group development um, and the tool, the group development questionnaire. And we have, uh, within Wireless Car, a number of certified GQ coaches, such as myself. Um, and, and this is a process of um, getting the team to, to complete the, the GDQ uh, working with the team and the Scrum Master on the results and then working on what steps to take after that. And then we have the DevOps Guiding Crew, 
and their focus is, or our focus, is the DevOps culture, mindset and practices, uh, helping teams to understand and make use of door and flow metrics, um, the organisation to understand and manage their value streams, and then at a, at a, at a deeper level, uh, providing DevOps coaching and supporting teams and individuals at all levels. So we have this way of, of working across the organisation, but then working directly with our teams so that they can basically help themselves to choose their DevOps journey. So we get into in a, in a bit more detail about some of the activities that we do um, to help this. So number one... Um, so we work with the, Devo, uh, the, with the wireless car culture. So this is really important that we actually work with it and not work against it. Uh, number two, uh, enabling people with knowledge. And we found this has a great effect on, on what happens in the organisation. Uh, and then we back this up by uh, inspiring, supporting, guiding and coaching where it's needed. So working with the wireless car culture. So freedom and autonomy is key to our culture at Wireless Car. We have many teams, everybody works in a team at Wireless Car, and we've worked hard uh, to build this, this sense of freedom and autonomy in the teams. Um, ownership, taking ownership of everything you do is really important as well, and it's ingrained in our culture, as well as this dare-to-do-it attitude. Um, and to do this, we, we work hard with Scrum Masters. They're the key to, to all these things in our teams. But then, we, of course, we need to back this up by providing teams with the organisational support, the guidance and coaching they need, um, and the guardrails they need. If you remember the industry we work in, automotive, we have to comply with, with standards and regulations. Uh, and if you remember our services, such as emergency call, we need a high, high level of quality, and then, of course, with vehicles, you need a high level of security as well. We need to ensure this in, in everything we do. Knowledge is an enabler, which is what we found. Um, so the, the DevOps guiding crew, we, we do training for our Agile leaders and, and, and other parts of the organisation where it's needed. Um, we have the DevOps podcast. And then we have what we call the Enabling DevOps Toolbox. I'll get into a few more details about this later. But it's, it helps teams uh, on the, to choose their DevOps journey, but to guide them on the steps they can take in that journey. So you pick a DevOps practice. Um, you, see, you can see where to get started, what the interim steps are, and then maybe more advanced uh, practices and tools you can use. And then we back this up with... Um, ways to inspire, to support, guide, and coach our teams and our individuals in the organisation. So workshops with, uh, for example, the, the, the core or the management teams in programs, um, lunch talks to, to inform and inspire, um, coaching where it's needed, and a buddy team system also where it's needed, where if you have a team who's already learned and making use of a a practice, then another team can learn directly for, from them. So through, through all these, then, we provide the mechanism for teams to, to choose the path they will take in adopting DevOps because they, they're the ones that know the situation best. They know their customer the best. They know the services the best. So we, we won't be prescriptive on what they should do they, they, they should choose the steps they take, and we just there, are, are just there to help and support them. And what we'll hear later in our talk is what some of the teams have done. Okay, tools and measures. So at Wireless Car, we measure the things that matter to us at Wireless Car, and also for our teams, we make sure we provide the, the tools that are important for the teams. So if you think about Dora metrics or GDQ results as tools for our teams, then you think about what you give your teams to help them. Are the metrics, the Dora metrics, used to help the teams? Or are they more for the management team? At Wireless Car, it's for the teams. 
We give them these, the, these, these tools, the Dora metrics, the GDQ results, the DevOps health radar as tools for them to see where they can improve, what steps they should take or could take in their journey. Uh, the DevOps health radar is a tool from Scale Agile. Um, it, it looks at different practices related to DevOps. Um, and then the, t the teams can take this and with the enabling DevOps toolbox, pick a practice and, like I said, go look at where to get started, maybe th what the next steps are, and then what some more advanced practices are uh, around that. Then we have its counterpart, which is the team development toolbox. So we can take the GDQ results, and, and in the GDQ results, it'll indicate certain things that might be happening in the team, and then using the team development toolbox, they can they can uh, find exercises the teams can do uh, to, to help them. And, and that's, they, they need to, to look at their journey to become high-performing teams uh, in a similar way to adopting DevOps. And for our delivery and product development organisation, um, so our SLAs for availability and resolution time are important, really important. Um, we don't measure throughput of our teams. Instead, we look at the committed versus delivered program increment objectives. Remember, we, we use our own version of SAFE at Wireless Car. And then we, we look at uh, our staff, and um, so the ENPS, and we also look at the staff rating on their feeling of autonomy in their work, on their level of satisfaction. Uh, the team spirit and work situation, which relates to the, the, the sustainability of their current work practices. Yes, we have also done some learnings through the journey, of course, and we want to share some of those. So we understand that not every team can adopt uh, DevOps in the same way, uh, at the same pace and have the same goal. So to be able to help them in the best possible way, we need to meet the teams where they are. Uh, and we also have understood that DevOps is not only a journey for us, it's a journey for our customers as well. So we need to work closely with our customers to be able to make the journey successful together. Uh, and we also need to write our contracts with delivery and our way of working in, in mind. So, are you ready to meet some of the teams? Are you ready to meet the teams? <laughs> yes. Nice. Let's meet the teams. At, at least uh, some of them. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's start with Kai first, and from Team Sirocco. My team created the concept Support Ninjas by rotating two people to work with direct support and to work with the service. There's always capacity to work with operations. The way of working gives the opportunity work to work with features and the service itself without being too complex. And let's go to Daniel and Team California. Through three pillars of testing and service architecture, measuring and monitoring, we are able to achieve on an average 20 plus deploys per week to production. And this is a lot in our environment. Um, and Magnus from Team Mate. In my team, we have two rotating maintenance hat, hat roles. QA activities and on-call is shared between team members. Services are very stable and have very few bugs. Isn't that great? So, and Niklas from Team Master Data. We focus a lot on innovation, always aiming to self-innovate and give the freedom for the developers to explore new areas. We dedicate around 40% of our capacity to ops and maintenance related tasks in order to ensure high quality and fast support to our stakeholders. We regularly 
perform DevOps evaluations to keep up with the latest trends and ways of working. And these are all examples of where freedom and autonomy is a success factor uh, because no one is forcing the teams to, to improve themselves. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, yes, we are getting to the end of our talk, and so we'd like to, to share some of our insights uh, that we've gained uh, through, our, through our journey. So, so, yes, we embraced the autonomy and freedom that we work in, and that proved to be a success factor in our journey, and I really hope that it can be in yours as well. It's important to point out that this didn't just happen. We didn't just say, everybody, you're autonomous now. We, we had to work with this and build this um, in, in our culture, and this, this, this took uh, quite, quite some time, um, and it takes focus and continued focus to make sure that it, you know, this, this culture continues to develop. Uh, even so, of course, the environment we work in requires us to, to comply with you know, standards and regulations um, and ensure security and quality in what we deliver. So as an organisation, we provide this support for the teams. Um, <clears throat> Team development is a key component. Um, I can't understate, overstate, overstate this is uh, too much. Um, we, we talk about DevOps culture and psychological safety, but are we really doing the work to, to help the teams to, to understand this, to help them to learn how to communicate uh, and collaborate better? Um, so having a crew dedicated to this really helps. Uh, knowledge empowers, which sounds kind of obvious now after the fact, but it helps our agile leaders to have better conversations with the teams. And if you have better conversations with your teams, then of course they they can they can choose their own DevOps journey with that support. And like I said before, the, the teams are the ones that know the situation best. They they know where their pain points are. We just need to help them along the journey. And, um, and just to reinforce, reinforce this, yes, trust and enable your teams. Um, just, <laughs> I know we throw around these words, trust and enablement and autonomy, but if you really provide this for your teams, they will choose uh, what's best uh, for them. But you need to be there to help and guide them along the way. Um, even so, we, we understand there's still some more steps to take in our DevOps journey, and Ronnie's going to talk about them right now. So, believe me or not, we have still challenges remaining. Um, we are still a fast-growing organization, uh, which means that we need to maintain our good way of working. So... Uh, for an example, we have to think about it when we uh, onboard new team members. Uh, we also have different customers with different requirements. That means that we need to write the contracts with our way of working and delivery in mind. Um, we also have different challenges in different customer programs and diff solutions in different stages of the life cycle. So, again, we need to meet the teams where they are to be able to help them in the best possible way. Um, so, look, if you're facing similar challenges to, to, to what we have, or if you would like to learn more, there's a lunch break now. Come and find us at lunch. We'd love to talk to you um, about it. So we hope you enjoyed learning about the Wireless Card DevOps journey. Um, and thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.